Welcome to part two of How to Practice Scales, a detailed and comprehensive method to help you maximize your ability in any given scale you choose to play if you apply these elements to your scale practice. We're continuing with the major scale just for convenience and consistency. We're also including the pentatonic major scale since the five notes of the pentatonic major scale are included in the major scale itself. All right, let's go. But wait, press that red button down there in the corner and you'll be subscribed to Outsmart Your Guitar. Hit the notification bell to be informed when new lessons are uploaded and then you can get to them, right? Outsmart Your Guitar is also on Patreon. So I would appreciate it if you would go over there and subscribe at one of two levels and become a patron. And in so doing, you support my efforts to continue to provide you with high quality lessons to help you learn, play, and grow to be the guitar player you desire to be to play the music you love, even write your own material. All right, sound good? All right, let's get on with the lesson. The first thing you want to do is record an A chord in a rhythm. Something like that. Doesn't matter, just nice straight time rhythm. Then what you're going to do is play over the top of it. I'm going to play two notes uh, uh, a beat. I'm at 96 beats a minute. If you're at a slower tempo, that's fine. It's not about speed, it's about quality of execution. Remember that? <laughs> So, pause your video, record your little A rhythm, and then practice the first position of the major scale up and back for about a minute or two. Get yourself nice and comfortable with it. Then when you're ready to continue, press play, and we'll keep going. All right, now what you want to do is over that same chord rhythm, is play something melodic. Now here's where you get to skip strings and do whatever you want using only the notes of the major scale in the first position. All right? So you might come up with something along these lines. Three, four. challenges you to be able to play melodically over a single chord. Because you only have limited information rhythmically and sonically to guide you, and that's the whole idea, to challenge you to go beyond what you know, to see what you can find out. Shakespeare called it the undiscovered country. So go ahead, pause the video, and explore the undiscovered country for a couple of minutes. Then when you're ready to continue, press play, and we'll keep going. Now let's switch to the pentatonic major scale in the first position, the main form. Again, you're going to play up and back just the pentatonic major scale. Now you do this to get your fingers oriented to the pentatonic major and no other scale, all right? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Pretty much 
it's just like that. <clears throat> so go ahead, pause the video, and practice this over the rhythm in the A chord. Get comfortable with it. Orient your fingers to just the pentatonic major scale in the first position. When you're ready to continue, press play and we'll move to the next bit. Now that your fingers are oriented to the pentatonic major scale, get melodic. <clears throat> okay, three, four. So pause the video and go ahead and practice this for a little while. You notice I did repeating ideas uh, just to kind of give a sense of melodic continuity. And that's another factor that you can use to help you create melodic ideas is to repeat an idea a few times and help use those to help create a more melodic idea. Even though you're playing over a very monotonic rhythm, you can still create some pretty interesting stuff. Okay? So, again, pause the video, practice this for a few minutes, really explore this first position of the pentatonic major scale, and then when you're ready to continue, press play, and we'll keep going. Now we're going to have some real fun because we're going to blend the pentatonic major scale with the Ionian mode, the, the major scale, first position. So all notes, either scale, interchangeably is now on the table. So you might come up with something like this. Three, four. <laughs> pretty weird sometimes, but that's cool because that's exploring and giving you ideas that may not necessarily work very well here over a single monotonic rhythm, but they might work when other chords are introduced down the road. All right, so you want to remember everything you're doing here when you do this. So pause the video, practice switching between the two scales, as you play in the first position, okay? And have fun with it and see what you come up with. There are some pretty cool things that are possible. I barely touched the surface. Then when you're ready to continue, press play and we'll keep going. In this next section, we're now going to create a progression for you to play over so that you can put to work everything you've been doing up to this point, all right? So let's get right to it. All right, we need, <clears throat> well, you need a progression now. So if you have trouble coming up with progressions, I've provided a sample here. Now we're just using four chords, A, D, E, and C sharp minor. Now you could also substitute the C sharp minor with F sharp minor. Both of these minor chords work very well when you are playing the major scale. They fit really nice because all the notes of those two chords are contained within the major scale in the key of A. And so that's all the theory I'm giving you right now. Okay, now the rhythm, the strum pattern is really straightforward. One and two and three 
and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Pretty straightforward. Now, I use the side of my palm to mute on two. So one, and two, and. So I also relax my fingers without removing them from the chord as insurance to make sure that those notes are all muted on the second beat. All right, so pause the video and learn this progression. Now I use all bar chords, but you can certainly use open position chords except for the C sharp minor if you so choose. I use bar chords because I have better control. All right, again, now, practice this progression. Get it down, get it smoothed out, and then bring in the metronome at the tempo where your scale playing is comfortable, not the progression, because the progression is serving your scale work. Remember, we're talking about um, quality of execution here. Remember that term? Quality of execution of your scale work, not your rhythm work. <laughs> okay, although that should be good too. So, when you've got it down and you've got it fairly smoothed out with the metronome, then restart the video and we'll move forward. All right, now that you've got the progression worked out and you've used the metronome to help smooth it out, go ahead and get the metronome going again Play through the progression a couple of times just to secure that you really do have it in time. Then hit the looper record function and play your progression to the metronome to keep yourself in time at whatever tempo works for you. Okay? Then when you're done playing through the progression one or two times, hit the stop or the play function, whatever your looper does to stop recording. Now, if it goes right into playback, it should be in sync with the metronome. That's the idea. So you listen to the playback two times, and if it's in sync at the end of the two times, then you've got a good loop. Yes, this is how to record good loops on your looper using a metronome. All right, now, if you have a looper that when you press stop recording or playback or whatever, and it just stops, then wait for the metronome to you know, get going like this, and then when you're ready, hit it right on the beat. And if your playback through two cycles stays in sync with the metronome, you too have a good loop. And that's something I discovered quite by accident. I was recording a progression at a certain tempo, and I hit the play button at the end of the recording, and at the end of the second cycle, I realized the metronome was still going, and it was right in time with the loop. So it was like, oh, I did a really good loop. And it's like, ah, oh, the epiphany, right? Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, get yourself a good loop recorded, and then we'll get to the good stuff, right? So press play when you're ready for that. All right, here's the fun stuff. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna play the major scale up and back for a minute or so. Get acclimated, keep your technique correct. And you're gonna play over the progression you just recorded, right? And I'm gonna play two notes a, a beat. You can play one note a beat if you want, it's up to you and um, just play up and back. Now, what I want you to notice when I do this is at the beginning of the progression, I'm not gonna be back here. I'm gonna be somewhere else in the scale. And that's a good thing to recall and to, um, to understand because the sound of the scale changes because the starting place of the scale is in a different place at the beginning of each cycle of the progression. Here, you'll hear it right now. Three, four.
hear it? So go ahead and do this for a minute or two. Really just kind of get into the sound of the major scale over the progression. All right? And then when you're ready to continue, press play and we'll keep going. Now, what you're going to do is play actual melodic ideas. And you just play around with it. Listen to what was happening when you were just running the scale, where you were at a different place in the scale at the beginning of the progression. This gives you ideas for melodic potentials, right? So, uh, let me demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about here as to what you could do, you know? just. Explore the ideas, jump around, skip strings, all that kind of stuff, whatever contributes to creating melodic ideas, okay? Here we go. Three, four. <laughs> straightforward stuff. And so pause the video and start working stuff out just in the first position alone, okay? And really have fun exploring the potentials here. I know you've been doing this throughout the last week. Start applying those ideas over the top of the progression and even modifying them so that they fit a little better within the context of the progression. All right? Then, when you're ready to continue, press play and we'll keep going. Now, you want to do the same thing with the pentatonic major scale. So first, let's just play the scale. I'm going to play two notes per beat over the progression. Here we go. Three, four. <laughs> and so forth. Again, did you notice at the beginning of the progression I was in a different place in the scale? Again, it starts to have a more melodic kind of sensibility to it, and that's the idea. Okay, so go ahead and do this for a minute or two over the progression, pause the video, and play through this, and then once you've done that, restart the video, and we'll keep going. All right, time to put the melodic thing to the pentatonic major. Again, first position of the pentatonic major, the main form. Resist the urge to let any notes from the major scale slip in. You want to stay strictly pentatonic major, first position. And so this might be something like what you'll come up with. Three, four. <laughs> So, pause the video, spend some time here, three to five minutes even, really dig into some of the stuff that's going on here. I stopped after just 30 seconds, I could have kept going. There's a lot going on, I was discovering things, and it's like, oh, hmm, never done that before, and that's the idea. 
And uh, the more time you spend playing in a given position, the more secrets it will reveal over time. All right? So pause the video. As I said, practice this. And when you're ready to continue, press play, and we'll keep going. Now the culmination of everything you've been working on up to this point. You're going to blend between the Ionian mode first position, the major scale first position, and the pentatonic major scale first position. Moving between them, using whatever notes of each of the scales works at any given moment, helping you to define and create a cool melodic idea. So here's what you might come up with. Three, four. Something like that. Uh, you're going to make little mistakes. That's okay. You saw I kind of flubbed a couple of things there. That just happens. That's part of the process. The idea is to just keep going. And uh, the more comfortable you get with the scale, the fewer mistakes you're going to make. Because you're going to have an idea of what it really sounds like in that position. That's part of why we do this specific methodical approach to playing and practicing scales. All right, so pause the video and see what you come up with. Now this I want you to play for around seven to ten minutes, not just a couple of minutes, but seven to ten minutes. Just dig into it, dig deep. What does this first position hold when you're blending between the pentatonic major and the major scale notes of this position? What kind of stuff is there hidden here in plain sight. All right? Then, when you're ready to continue, we'll wrap it up for this lesson. All right, there you have it. Lesson two in how to practice scales. As you can see, we are being very thorough and very detailed in explaining and demonstrating how to practice scales. In this case, the major scale and its companion, the pentatonic major scale. Okay? You've been learning to blend between the two as well, which is really important because it's sort of a primer in helping you understand here's how you can use more than one scale in a given situation. It just has to have compatible notes, right? And the major scale and the pentatonic major scale, well, they share five notes. So, um, that makes the pentatonic major scale utterly compatible with the major scale. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So you want to go through and really pay attention to everything you're doing. If you need to review this lesson again over the coming week, do so. Make sure you understand everything that's been going on in lesson one and two, because lesson three is going to build upon what you've been learning. All right? And that's the whole idea. We're building the beast because these are that detailed. You're here because you want to learn to practice scales better. You want to learn to play scales better. That's what I'm doing here. I'm giving you the knowledge and the understanding you require to be able to play the major scale. And by extension, when you apply this information to other scales, any scale you want to learn to play better. All right? So, when you're ready for the next lesson, and don't be in too big a hurry, it'll be there, as will I. And we'll see you then.